<laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna do the background first and we're gonna do a sky color. And um, it is gonna be very bright yellow here where the sun is and it's gonna be really, really bright. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna start out with, I'm gonna wet the surface, but I'm gonna take it down and so that we don't have time for it to dry because I wanna get it dry before. So I'm gonna go with blue here. And as I go down, I'm going to get this in this area, I keep that white. And then right here is where the sun's gonna blend through and do that optical scatter that I was talking about. Optical scatter, meaning that it scatters the optics and that makes it look really bright right here. And we're gonna make that the sun shining through those trees. So now I'm gonna put this through here. And so I'm just gonna go like that and I come down. Now, you know, it's away from there, I'm gonna keep it blue, but as I go down towards the hills and um, the mountains and uh, whatever you wanna call them, the trees, even the tree background, I'm gonna keep those really light. And so as I go down, I wanna make it a little bit, a little bit more orange. And so from a blue to an orange, Again, sorry about the sound. Again, I'm in, I'm happy, actually happy, very happy I could actually do one today. Because uh, normally, I, next week there will not be one. Next week I, I'm up in Grand Marais and there's no time to do the the thing because I'm in a competition. So next week well, there will not be a, a paint along. And so I really wanted to get this one in here this week. And so now again, I'm gonna go with orange to blue and make that look very, very, like it's shining right through. Sorry about the sound. Again, sorry about the sound. It's just nothing I can do. It's a new program. If it wasn't my new program because my, my phone camera doesn't work and I had to redo everything. And so um, I couldn't figure it out today. I spent most of the day trying to figure this thing out. And so I just had to go with a new program. And this is a new program that I've ever used for broadcasting. It's something a little bit different. It is a free broadcasting. If it does work, I will let you guys know what this is, where you can broadcast and you don't have to pay for it. And so if it does work, <laughs> um, I'll have to check out certain things about it. And so now I'm going to stay away from this area right now because I want that to dry and it's more of a tint and it's really light, the background, right? The sky is really light. And so I'm going from a light blue to like an orange to a yellow. And then we're here I'm going to make a really bright yellow where the sun is keeping the white right where the sun is. And then we are um, going to go down here and I want that to dry because that's going to be another wash on dry and it's going to be a hard edge. It's going to be a hard edge. And so it will look soft because we're gonna keep it very low in contrast. And while that's doing it, and I can, I can go back into that area when it's dry, but I can't right now. So I'm just gonna do the water right away. And I'm not gonna have it as, as more, much of a mirrored image as it's gonna be more, it's gonna be hard edged, um, but I'm gonna like this, this reflection into the water will be hard edged. I'm all about doing hard edges today, but I wanna show you how you can make them look soft with, with your values. And so I'm going to wet the water, I'm going to go right through the darks area, which is the land and that. So I'm just going to do the water, wet it all. And I'm not going to put the reflection in at first. I'm just going to put in my colors that I have up above. So I'm going to go with the yellow that I started out with right here, kind of an orangey yellow. And please ask questions. Um, I, I look at once in a while. I hope it's just hope it's a little bit better now, but I clicked on something and I think it worked. <laughs> you know, you never know. It's like um, I was trying to, I mean, like I said, I spent all day trying to make sure, make sure this kind of works, but you never know what, what, with the new devices. And I did test it on thing and I did hear something like that too. I did hear a little bit of sound. I just thought it was maybe my mouse <laughs> being a little bit too loud, but I guess that wasn't it. So now I'm gonna do the dark, the blue from the bottom into the water. And again, I'm not putting the reflection in like I would normally with a soft edge, because I can do that with a soft edge. But like I said, today is about doing hard edges, making them look soft. 
because John Pike, I don't know if you look at John Pike's work, he worked that way too. He did a lot of hard edges, but he was a master. And if you looked at my newsletter, you saw some of his work, one of his works with that had it in there where he works a lot of hard edges, um, but because they're, the values are so great that he makes it look very soft edged at things. And this will look very soft edged because it's gonna be just slightly darker, slightly darker than the sky. And it will be look really nice and soft. Now I'm gonna get to the really dark darks. They're gonna be hard edged too. But inside the inside the hard edges, I'm gonna make it soft and glowing, like right here. I'm gonna have a glow. But again, I have to wait till things dry because I don't want to show. I don't want today to be about soft edges. So this is gonna have to dry. That's gonna have to dry. And it's it's getting close. But while I do that, I'm just gonna do this land because this land can be really nice and dark. And I'll get to that right now. And so I'm gonna make this land right here really dark and um, it's dry, so it's dry around it, so I can show you how to make a dark edge. And I still do my edges on dry, but away from the edge, I'm gonna wet that, and I'm still gonna flow my pigment there. I'm not gonna stop flowing my pigment in other spots, just because um, I want it to be, I mean, you really wanna do all edges, soft and hard in your painting, usually. I like a lot of lost edges, so now I'm making this warm and really dark, and um, I should put in the lights first because um, the shadowing I'm going to make in here, I'm going to make soft. I guess I could do it hard edge too, couldn't I? Yeah, I might get hard edge too. Because again, today is about hard edges. And how do you get hard edges? You remember? Dry paper. Dry paper gives you hard edges. It's the only way you can get hard edges. If you wet everything, which I've been telling you forever now to do, um, that you're going to your, gonna get your soft edges. But if you want a hard edge, you just keep things dry. And so I'm putting my, my light color down here and I'll put the shadowing over that. And so I'm using more warm colors because this comes forward and making it a little bit warmer. And then the sun is going to shine through there and just be really bright. And to make something look bright, you got to make other things darker. Like these trees are, are going to be really dark compared to that. Please ask questions too. Um, I know I've been asking you questions about this, <laughs> if it's sound is good or whatever, but um, if you have regular questions, not about the sound anymore, uh, just let me know. Just, I would like to answer them and I'll look up every once in a while to see. And so I'm just putting in, you know, these, the main lights of the, um, of this little, little land right here. It's the light part. Now that's soft edge because I couldn't wait for that to dry, but that's fine. Here it's all um, hard edged because it's dry right there. Check when you want to check your paper. Check with the back of your hand, not with your with your fingertips, because with your fingertips you get it's a look. Um, with you're going to put um, oil from your fingers onto the paper. And so now we're going to go in here and we're going to it's dry enough. You know, if it's like if it's cool, it's still good enough to go ahead and um, and put your hard edge down. And you can even use it when it's damp. You can make it look like it's a little um, watermark because watermarks kind of look fuzzy too. But I'm basically going to take that orange and yellow that I just took before, make it slightly darker. It's not so much a wash. I call it a tint of color. And I'm going to go from the background here right through these people. I, I did put two people in there because, again, you know me, I like putting people into things. And so I'm just going to go back here and start that one wash back there. And it's just a little bit lighter, a little bit, I mean, a little bit darker than the background. It is a hard edge. It's a very hard edge because it's dry, very close to dry. I'll bring it down. And I'm going to let it, I'm just going to blend it a little bit because I don't want it to go too far to that because I'm also going to make another, another wash in front of that. So each wash that I do, I'm going to put in front of the next one and with a hard edge. But see how already this doesn't look very hard edged, though it is a very hard edge. But because it's very light compared to a very other contrasty thing, it's not very much contrast. And so it'll look, it'll look soft edged. It's a trick, like I said, that John Pike used a lot. And um, I always wished I could do more of that. But remember, inside the wash, you can still put enough water there and then let the pigment float. That's still um, then something you should do. And um, let me do this again. And there'll be a little bit of 
soft edges or hard edges right there or soft edge I mean because it's wet right now but that's okay I, I don't otherwise we're gonna just uh, sit in our here sit around here and just wait around and <laughs> we don't want to do that either <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little bit darker this is gonna be a little bit darker slightly darker than what you have already make it slightly darker and it will look soft edge where it's hard up here and even here it's dry enough that's going to make it look soft right to the people right to the ground here nice and light so again what it what it means to get um, hard edges and make it look soft is that it should be done with a little amount of contrast as possible not much contrast you don't want the contrast because the contrast will make it look um really hard edged or hard edged if you did it on paper that was um dry if you do it on soft if you do it on the soft then you don't have to worry you just do that while it's all wet and that's what we, all, we did for the last two weeks we tried to figure out how to make it so that it looks um soft edged and make it control your soft edges in a wet wash this now is another thing this is on dry paper and getting hard edges and see this is a hard edge that's a hard edge but doesn't it look kind of soft still I mean it's so neat that you can do that when it the sun is right here so make that part a little bit more orange color wise make this more orange because it um, it burns it, it just burns right there and so I'm gonna still make it light but I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more in the orange family really bright right there and as it goes away it kind of grays a little bit compared to what everything else is and then I'm gonna bring that right through the people here again and then the people will be dark and silhouetted against that so that looks just fine so there we have three levels we got the sky back mountains these trees and it also depends on what you want it to look like what, what is the edge is the edge trees or is it um mountains what is it that you're trying to show and this is all going to basically be dark this whole area here is going to be a dappled dark so i don't have to do much of anything right there i'm just going to leave that dark all right so we got the foreground we got the whole background done and this is going into this big clump of trees right here but you notice how that big clump of trees has this softness right there so that softness what you're going to do is you are going to take and wet it but get the outer edge hard that's it with again it's very important to get the hard, outer edge hard but as you're coming down here i'm going to wet the inside surface and then i will get that to look very soft and that's wet into wet because that you know, I mean, it has to look like a soft edge and sorry i'm working on cardboard so it's probably shaking a little bit too isn't it, is it? yep all kinds of things when you're away from your studio <laughs> and so this is kind of a nice nice orangey color too a little bit darker um, it is kind of a more of a um, it's gonna be a hard edge right here but then it's gonna go and I'll wet it so I'm making a nice hard edge and it's kind of like a little bit darker orange than what's already there and then I'm gonna wet the the ground the ground surface all the way across here and I'm gonna wet it in here and then I'm gonna manipulate the washes in here the outer edge though is hard and so that's going to be the outer edge and since we did it not too dark then it's going to look very soft how many times have i said that already <laughs> i know it's going to get sickening <laughs> now i'm going to go into my this is more orangey so i'm going to go a bluish green i could take it into more of a um like a, a, a like a a um fall scene but i'm not going to do that i'm still going to go with the more summer greens that's okay and we don't want to get too fast into winter yet so we're going to still go with a little bit of green here you know me and not liking green but you know it's just a time and place <laughs> and so here i'm putting like a grayish green like the picture and i'm going to do it hard edged and now i'm a little bit more contrast up here and i can also make it look like trees like i can make it like a hard edged if I didn't want to make it look this hard edged and not be that contrasty, then it would look more soft edged. But this is okay to have hard edged a little bit. What the heck? Not everything has to be um, soft edged or even soft edged looking. So I'm coming down and then that's wet and then I'm just going to bleed in, right? And I'm going to bleed in and control the edges right here because that's what I taught you the last two weeks is how to control that soft edge. And you come around the back so it's like glowing. This is going to glow. 
And then we just make this dark. Let that glow. And it's a little bit darker down here. And then take your yellow and orange. And again, work enough pigment so it doesn't bleed into everything. And that's just a little bit, a little bit darker than this side. So that's going to look, that's hard edge, but look at how soft that looks. Doesn't it look soft? It's so cool that you can do that, you know, and um, I don't find many people teaching you how to do soft and hard edges. And so that's a come I really want you to get that, get that possibility of being able to do soft and hard edges, both. Got to be able to do both and control it. Hard edges is easy. Now there's a little piece of land sticking over here. I'm gonna, I brought it down a little bit farther. And so I'm gonna put that right away. And then I'm gonna do this reflection. I'm gonna do the same way I just did that. And, um, but though with a little bit more, a little bit more line work. You can even go in here now. Let's say I wanna give a little bit of a texture to it. Actually, I should cheer you guys on again. Cheers guys, cheers, cheers, cheers. Well, we didn't have to scrub this and not do it because of the sound. <laughs> Never like missing a, a week for me, for you guys. <laughs> and so here we go. I'm going to put that in there. So here I'm going to put in a little like, like tree branches to make it maybe even trunks. Just to make it look a little bit like just something there. You know, you can, there is also, um, there's a, there's a, this foreground, there's a, branch that kind of sticks out. I'm going to use some paper towel. Watch this. I'm just going to take some of this out of here and make it light. And it's going to look like the tree that's in front. And then that will be when I, when I let that, because what I'm doing is I'm absorbing the water. It's going to be a hard edge because anytime you absorb the water, that's what makes you give it gives you a soft edge. But if you take the water away and the pigment, it's going to give you a hard edge. So that's going to be a hard edge right there. So you think by putting paper towel, you're gonna to make a hard edge. Nope, you make a soft, you make a, I mean a soft edge, you make a hard edge because you're taking away the water that softens it. This got kind of dark a little bit because it's not as vibrant, it's not as colorful, but it's too late now because I've lost the sheen. And once you lose the sheen, you really can't go back in. You can if you put some more water in there, but I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then I'll make, I'll get into this area now. Now, how do you make leaves, hard edge leaves? Boy, there's a million ways, and I don't know my ugly, or there's a thing called the um, what's that? funny brush, and it's rubber bands, and then you can dump it, and it's like a brush with rubber bands, and you can put things like that in. You can use an ugly brush, which is a, um, a stiff bristle brush. You can put that there. I like to just take my small brush, like maybe even a rigger, and I like to make the edges hard. And again, I'll, I'll do it with a, a dark blue, a dark green, I mean, uh, and it's going to be really dark now. And I noticed when um, a couple of people were doing this last week is that they tend to do too many hard edges. And like let some of the inside can be when you do these soft hard edges of all the leaves, you don't want everything to be that hard edge. So what you want to do is you kind of go in there and do the outer leaves and then the inside try to let that be a little bit soft edge too. It's very important to get some soft edges in your work. Otherwise, it just looks too harsh. And so what I'm going to do here is right away just get some of these trunks of the trees. It's nice and dark. I'm using my rigger brush. Rigger brush is a really long brush. It holds a lot of paint. And I can put a little bit more warmth in the, on the trunks of the tree. And I kind of tried to follow a little bit of the branches when I was drawing it. But if you're off a little bit, that's okay because it is a, a tree branch and tree trunks. And so... It doesn't have to be perfect, not like a portrait or anything like that. As long as you go thick on the bottom to thin as you go up. Trees don't get thicker when they go up. They get thinner and thinner branches. And and I'm going right over the leaves, um, which will be on top of them afterwards. So it's always good to put in the trunks first, and then you put the, the leaves on top of it. And you can also shift off, so if there's some in the back, let's say the back trunks are a little bit farther back, you can make them orange because again, and actually right here where the sun is, I should have made those orange, I didn't forget to tell you that. So right here, these branches right here, and I'm gonna take my paper towel and wipe that out because um, those have to be orange. They have to, I'm not sure why I didn't think about them. They have to be very, very vibrant because the sun is bleaching them out. It's gonna be like really orange right there. 
Let me show you this up closer. Um, so that's going to be bleached out a little bit. So what I'll do is right where the sun is, I'm going to make those bright orange. Bright, bright orange. And yellow even. Bright yellow and orange right here. And some you can even leave like, like it's burning it totally out that you don't even see it. Like the branch is so, it's so bright that the branch turns white. And I'm going to just tap right here and I'll just make it look like that. And then right away, make them go dark again. Right after that, then you just see that they go dark again. If you do birch trees, of course, you usually do the behind it or you do a side of it that's dark. But these are just silhouetted. And so it's very important you get them dark and darker as they go away from the sun. So, and over here, there's so many. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bigger, my bigger flat brush, go on with a bunch of this nice dark, dark, purple, Prussian blue, black, and just make it really dark. And over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a bunch of lines and put them closer together. And like, there's it's just a ton of them. And I should actually, let's do a couple orange ones so they're behind, because it's good to have some behind. And it's so clumped together that you almost don't see. It's almost like it blocked in completely. And so you can go and do the orange first and then just the dark right on top of that. Branches going in every different direction. And some are farther forward. So you put some farther forward, some up a little bit higher to the point where you almost can't see through some of the spots and there's a little dappled light coming through here and there. And it's a lot of it's gonna be covered with, with the, um, with the foliage, and I probably should do some of that foliage first. So what I'm going to do is I take my round brush and to get some of the foliage back there, like this is the dark foliage that I'm going to be going on, like I was just talking about before, but I'm going to take some orangey foliage because that'll be by the sun behind, like you're seeing through. This is the shadow side and the other side would be where the sun is hitting. We're going to see some of that. So I'm just going to poke my brush straight down, like I'm trying to ruin the bristles. So I'm just trying to go in here like this. I'm just poking downwards. And it's making just the um, textured leaves. And it's orange. You know, they're behind. Again, remember where you're, where it is that you're, where you're painting and what it is that you're painting. These are the leaves behind the trees. Then this is behind. The, but it's being lit up by the sun because it's back there. And I'm just going to, see, I'm just poking straight down. And I don't have much water in there. So every once in a while, I like to take a little bit of brush of water. And I like some of this just to bleed together. Because I don't want everything to be so hard edged. I, I still like some floating pigment. Floating pigment is very important to get. It's very, very important. Now, I'm also going to put some really bright leaves right here where the sun is, leaving alone my white. Remember, the white right there has to stay white. And I'll even do some, the yellowish orange right here where the dark is, but then they'll be right the same spot. There will be dark ones right over that. Any questions, guys, yet? Any questions? Let me know. So even though, like I said, most of this has been hard edge on dry paper, every once in a while you still want to go in there and get some of this to be soft edge by just wetting your brush and just going over it. Let some of it kind of bleed together and blend together and also um, float. You know, me and my floating pigment. Now, uh, this is this is dry. Let me go in there really quick because I'm going to let that dry now. A little bit now i'll go my hard edge darks in there but i want to get this reflection from this this land right here and so i'm going to do the same exact color hard edges but inside here will be soft and so that i can wet i can wet inside here because i want that to be soft edged but the outer edge of this reflection will be nice and hard edge it's very light light in value so i'm just going to be very light in value but it's the same color as above and then I'm just going to kind of fake the waves, a little bit more waves than what's in the picture. In the picture, you don't have hardly any waves. It's very slick, like a mirror. I don't like that kind of look, though. And so I'm going to go more with a little bit more of a waviness to it. And not much, but just a little bit more waviness to it. And then so the dark here. And way up here is the same color. I still have that in my palette right here, right? And so I can just manipulate that up here because that's the same color. So it's going right into the corner, but I want to go that far down. Hmm. 
I'm not going to go that far down. I'm not going to go in that corner because it's going right to the corner. And that's not a good thing in composition is go right to the corner. So I'm going to leave it right about here. Make some hard edges. Inside though, I'm going to keep it, some of it um, hard edged, but most of it in the inside of the wave, of the slight waves are going to be um, soft edged and wet, wet into wet. Sending back and forth, just good little edges there. I'm leaving a little bit of the background light through there where you leave a little bit of the blue because that's the side of the side of the wave that is not getting the light or not getting a reflection. I mean, it's not getting a reflection. So it's going to be the sun like this is right here. Now over here, there is no reflection of this little bit piece of land, but I'm going to put a little bit in here, just a little bit like it's just slightly because there's a little bit of harshness to it. I want a little bit of like waviness to it. We'll go back in here, make probably make this a little bit darker, or maybe not. No, I may not. Because I may I may go in here though, because this is, didn't get the right color. I have to make this when it's dry, I have to make this orange, like these orange leaves, because this this side of that tree would have the light again from the sun. And so by putting the dark in that I put in now, you will get it to make this look really bright. Like it's behind it, and it's really shiny and bright. And then when I put the shadows, it'll identify where the sun is coming from, because there's a sun right there. And I'll be putting shadowing all the way through here to show you how to make the sun work. And so I like the, um, right now I've been noticing that I probably could do this, like what I'm in Grand Marais, that was there yesterday. And I could see through the water and it was so clear that you could see the rocks in through the water and you'd be right around here. And you would do that with a light blue. Let me just do that. Let me show you how to do that. It's like you take a little bit of light blue, the same color right here. And then you kind of, like you did rocks before, you kind of go around the rocks and make the dark part of the rocks and the light part. And you make it the same value. It's almost like you're doing the reflections. Um, really light though. And it's gotta be the same exact color as the water because the water is what you're, this blue sky is what you're kind of seeing. And so you want that to just look like it's like you're seeing a little bit of the rocks and stuff, the rocks underneath here. Not rockness, <laughs> the rockiness. Like if there's little rocks in here, you go around them and the side of them. And you'll see that for a little bit, but then you'll just see a reflection because that's what you're mostly seeing. It's like a mirror, but sometimes you can see into the water and then you can see a little bit of what. And since this blue is taking over down here, you could make this uh, more of a brown, but I'm going to keep it more of a reflection of the sky than it is the, the, the ground color that that's probably what it would be. Like right here, you can make that dark and still make the kind of little bit of rockiness to it. So see how it looks like you can see into the water because there's a little bit of roughness into it and then it stops because then it becomes like the mirror. Cheers again, guys. Cheers again. <laughs> All right, now for the really heavy duty darks and the leaves. And it's dry now, everything's dry. Again, test it with the back of your hand. And so here I'm, I'm using um, Prussian blue. I'm using Cranachrome gold, a little bit of black, a little bit of violet. It's making me a really dark, dark. And then I'm just gonna poke my brush downwards, straight down. You can't even see that, right? So I'm gonna do it in the side a little bit, but I'm just kind of poking, making little dots and also bending the, 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 um, bending the needles of my brush, you know, the, the um, the hairs of my brush, I'm kind of bending around so that I can use little individual hairs of the brush, the bristles of my brush, I kind of just bend. It's kind of hard to see, right? I'm sorry, I'm always putting my hand in front of it. But worry about the outer edge is what you're worrying about. Not so much the inside right now. I'm worrying about the outer edge and how the outer edge looks. Don't make it just a big round shape because that's not how they, nobody's up there trimming that tree. There's going to be a little bit of um, maybe one or two branches that are just kind of out there and the leaves. You don't have to even put the um, branches. You just want to put the leaves. And if you notice, there's big clumps of dark areas. And so what I do is I then I just push down a little bit harder. And then I just come up, come over here and do the same thing. Now, right around here, I'm going to clean out my brush and we're going to do the same thing with these branches or with the leaves. I mean, as you did 
with these branches, you're gonna make them yellow and orange because right around here, they're gonna to turn to this really bright, bright yellow because the sun is just so bright right there, even the ones in front, because it's, again, it's burning. It goes right to a dark then, but you have to have this in there. So it looks like it's burning through. The sun is just so vibrant and it's what's lighting up your whole scene. So you gotta put that in there. Just, and then right away, go dark. I mean, right away, it, it's dark right away. But you need to put right where the sun is, you need to make that orangey, orangey, yellow, yellow, somewhere in that field. Sometimes you don't have to even put it yellow and orange, you just make it really bright because there's times when it's not orange and it's not low enough yet, it's more of a midday, but you still get the, the shininess to it where it's really light. Now right away, really dark right away. And I like to make little patches of dark, not just dots everywhere. It's kind of weird because leaves come within clumps because of like the branches are in a certain area. And so now you're getting a little bit of, the light is over here a little bit farther. I brought it in this way a little bit. So this I'm making up a little bit here. Again, take really dark, dark sometimes, and I'm going to use Prussian blue, Pernacidum gold, making it pretty thick, some violet, permanent violet. And it looks like there's a big clump right here of dark. It's pretty thick to my um, paint right now, and I can put some color or some water in there later to let things blend. Over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna blend a bunch of it, or I'm just gonna poke it, poke a lot of it. Not getting rid of the, all the white though. You can't get rid of all the white because it shines through here and there, right? You gotta have it just shine through. And I like poking straight down like this because again, you're getting to make it look like there's little needles or brand, or little leaves. I do like to add water here and there. You know, I like to put a little bit of water and let things bleed together a little bit. Don't do too much of that though, because um, then you're gonna lose all your hard edges. You don't wanna lose your hard edges. There's like a little bit of a, oops, oof, just touched it. <laughs> I was trying to point out. So I'm gonna go in here and just, there's like a little light coming through this area. And this corner over here is really dark. And so there, I'm just gonna put a lot, a lot of paint. And don't always just use the same color. Add a little bit of warmth on some of it, let some a little bit darker green, some of it bluer green, a little bit of everything. And once it's wet, then you can just let things float a little bit. But look at the darkness. I mean, look at how dark things are. And if it looks like it's black, put down black, that's okay. If it looks really super dark and you have to make it look really dark, then by all means, make it dark. Make it look really, really like what the picture is and then get the contrast. Because now look at how light that looks back there. And it's maybe not as colorful as, as in my picture. And I can make this a little bit more orange. I think I didn't make that orange enough, but that can still come. You can always make things a little bit more darker and you can also make things more colorful by applying those colors over it. So, in this kind of scene, you can find so many places. Just watch for the sun to be behind, uh, in front of you, looking, sparkling through trees. You know, there's a lot of that you can you can do that anywhere. I mean, unless you live in the desert where there are no trees, you can find some trees and then look into the sun, not directly, <laughs> but um, let the sun be dappled through a tree like this. And then you now see how I want a little bit of this to be a little bit more soft. You know, like a, some of it can be softer. Ooh. Just hold a little bit there. And let some of this be softer by wetting it. You can always wet some parts. If you feel like you didn't get the softness to it, just wet it with water. I mean, that's what you would wet with what? <laughs> of course, you're going to wet with water. <laughs> a little bit more, there's some more orange leaves. All right, and so let me get into the shadows. So there's the dark of the trees so much. And then I'm going to take the shadows and make these shadows it's the same color as this part is here. And so that was kind of orangey, orangey, burnt orange kind of color, browns almost. And so I'm just gonna take this area, which looks just basically dark. So I'm gonna take the same color that the ground is right there right now, and then just make it a little bit darker. Kind of wash that through and then take each individual tree. And there's also this little ledge right here. There's a little ledge right there. And I'm just gonna 
take my brush and tap it on the side here because I don't want it to be really just a line. So I'm going to tap my brush sideways, kind of scumbling it a little bit. And see how it's just a little scumble. I don't want a straight line. Nothing in nature is like really, unless you build it, you know, a little wall right there. But it's just where the water probably hit that shoreline and kind of erodes it. And so it comes washing back in at one time, I'll bet. And so here now, we'll just put that scumble a little bit, make it look more textury. Now I'll go back into my shadows. And what color is the shadow? It's the color that I already have down there first. That's what you're going to use that color. That's like I said, orangey, orangey, brownish, purple. And so I'm just going to take, and here the sun goes a little bit this way. Follow the sun. It's almost like, you know, the sun hits the tree right here. It goes downwards. This one goes this little way a little bit. This one goes a little bit farther. This one goes in this direction. This one goes a little bit farther. Then, of course, you get the leaves that are on up here. That's going to also affect this, the shadow itself. Like this whole big area is dark because of this big thing of the leaves. Jacqueline, <laughs> Jacqueline, <laughs> Jacqueline lives in um, Arizona. So there's trees in um, Northern. Uh, I've been to the, like Pine, Pine Top of Arizona and that was really, very woodsy. But like Phoenix and stuff where there's more cactus than, you know, I mean, you take a cactus and put the cactus next to the sun or shrubbery. And so down here now, we're gonna go in here and just put this dark in here. And then I'm going to run it down through this edge of this, um, where the water hits the, where the water hits the land. It usually is a nice dark area too. Now here, I'm going to spatter a little bit. I'm just going to tap it like this, a little bit, a little bit of water, because I want it to be floating, but I also want some hard edges on it. See, just little hard edges, and then let that come over there. And it's just the color they have already down. I mean, it's just a little bit darker. And if there is some, let's say there's some green grasses in there, you can put them in too. Right away, just take a little bit of blue and your connectum gold, make a green, and just float that a little bit in there or put some grasses in into that dark. Put a little green in there, that's fine, because you got it in the leaves, right? And so there could probably be some down here too. And then this is all dark right down here. And so let me, that's almost too much green. I don't think it looks like there's land there, or I mean grass there. If you put too much green, it'll look like it's a uh, um, like grass. It's really just ground. The ground is covered with needles, probably because of all these pine trees there. And there's a little bit of you know, because usually nothing grows underneath the pine trees. It's just the needles. And here's nice and dark. Follow your value study. Always follow your value study. Look at their values. It's very like, you know me. You gotta follow those values. Here I'm putting in an extra little. Thing just because I want to. Uh, she's in the Phoenix area. <laughs> in Phoenix, yep. I love that. I used to teach at the um, Scottsdale Artist School. I taught there like for four years in a row, but then I stopped and now I just can't get back into that one. I, maybe if I try a little bit harder, maybe I can get back into um, the Scottsdale Artist School. It was a really beautiful place. I love teaching there too. So friends who had um, moved up there from Chicago area. All right, so that's the thing is the left side um, with the shadows and the trees and the light kind of just signing through there. I'll put a couple more branches in there, leaves of, of orange and stuff in a second. Let's go over this side now. So the first thing I want to do is make this one part that's a little bit farther forward, a little bit brighter in color. So I'm going to make that a little bit more, um, let's say, orangey yellow again because it's going to be lit up right here. Make that leaves, and um, I'm gonna have to do the background a little bit darker. Then I'm just gonna make that a little bit dark. Go right to a green, a same thing. So this uh, the front of it is gonna be dark, but the back side where it's the sun is hitting it, you gotta think dimensionally, not like flat. You don't know, can't think flat. You gotta think dimensionally, like what's in front, what's behind. So always think that way. Think of, of what's in front, what's behind, how it's lit up, where it's lit up. I mean, the sun is right there, and you can just figure out where it is that things are going to be light and dark. This side of the, this side of the, the little hill here will be a little darker. Probably make it the same as that, as this side, if it's the same kind of land. A little bit of orange on here. 
And then because I didn't do this good job of coloring this to make it look like the background, I'm just gonna go in there and re-wet it again and then just give it a little bit more orange. So put a little bit more orange in here. Let's go right over it. Even this part a little bit lighter, so it's like the top of the land right here. And then get a little bit of this darkness in here. That way you can make the top of that piece of land look lighter too. And then make this look nice and dark. And then pull that out a little bit. Don't want that too dark. See so yeah, how you can work it when you're working wet in the wet, you can work things around that. So let me get a little bit of the land, a little bit brighter. And then this is really dark down here compared to the other parts. So I'm gonna go in here, can make it a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit of that green that I just made. We can put that in there too. So that'd be reflecting right here a little bit. What time do we have? I got, I'm gonna still got plenty of time. Questions? Enjoy this lesson. Good luck with your competition, Dave. Oh, thanks, Deborah. Um, it's gonna be fun. I don't know if you've ever been to a plein air um, event, a festival, plein air festival where everybody's in. It's kind of a competition. And um, it's super fun. I mean, you meet so many people and you have a good time and you're painting every day for, you know, for on Friday and we'll end on Friday. So you're painting from Friday to Friday, you know, and it's just going to be every day, paint, paint, paint. So it can't, it's going to be great. I just can't wait. And I was out there yesterday, there were already people out there painting. And so it's fun to see what people are doing. Now here we have people, I'm just gonna put the shadows in there right now. I might as well have it in my brush anyway. So there's gonna be two people I put right there. And they're not in the picture, but you can make them up or find, you know, go on the internet, find some picture of a couple people. And and if you wanted to you can put them in there. I always think it makes the painting look more alive when there's people in it, but that doesn't mean you have to have it. Some people don't like people in their painting. And that's absolutely wonderful. You don't need that. The picture looks pretty good without it too. And so here, it's kind of still blurry, and so I'm going to keep it blurry. I just made this a little bit darker there just so that um, you can see where the land starts. And maybe here's a couple of little tree branches or trunks of the tree. Just so there's a little bit more detail, just a little bit, but not so contrasty. So it looks soft edge. Even though this is all hard edge I'm doing right there because it's on dry. But it won't look it won't look hard edged because it's gonna be not so dark. Now for the people, I'm just gonna make them on the one side of them. I'm gonna make light first, always light to dark. So I start out with the light part, and I'll make this their heads light. Their shoulder is gonna be light because the top of their shoulders will be light. Now we get a little bit darker. I'm gonna come in and as you're going down and away from away and behind them, it's gonna be darker. So we'll have the legs now. We'll do the legs after that. We'll bring down the legs into this scene. So just gonna put this in this direction. Just make them look like they're standing there. Maybe she can have a red tap on here, a little bit dark, a little bit more different. And then I'm gonna put some really dark darks because they're really, they're gonna be silhouetted, but um, you don't have to make everything silhouetted. You can make the side of their head a little bit darker. Maybe she's got long hair that you can't see from there. And then it's a little bit darker on this side. Maybe, his, maybe he's got darker pants on. Um, and I think because it's like, um, now I'm getting details, I'm going to put like a little, a little bush right here, just so there's going to be foliage and stuff and maybe a little weeds and stuff right here, a little shrubbery, greenery. And that will also give me a chance of putting some more shadowing going this way. You know, and also like little leaves and stuff in there. We have little dots here. Oh well. 
Let's see. What else? Anybody see something I need to do? <laughs> All right. I think we're pretty close here, guys. Get this done fast. I think I'm going to put a little bit of, um, a little bit dark again right over here. And that's going to be about it. Give a little texture. The bottom of the, bottom of the lake where I said where the water hits the land, usually it's really dark. And then, um, Maybe a little branches coming through this part of the tree, little leaves here and there. And then how about tiny branches over here where my center of interest is? There's a center of interest. I like to call it area of interest because sometimes it's not just objects. It's like an area. Oh, I forgot something in the background. Look at this, watch this. I'm just gonna, in the background, I forgot a little bit of this tree right here. There's a little light, really light tree back here. So if I make it really light, it's hard edge, but look at how I can just go in here and make it look soft by just putting a little bit darker than what it is. You can put land a little bit darker. Just use a little bit of that darker color. Just slightly, it's hard edged. Maybe I'll even do a little bit of reflection, just slight reflection in the, into the water. Barbara says, painting clouds in the plain air helped me with the cloud lesson. Clouds are very great. I mean, the last two weeks we've been doing clouds. I didn't put any clouds in this one on because I was really paying attention to the, the hard edges, making it look soft. And um, so that's how you do that. Wow, that's gorgeous. Got here late, so we'll have to rewatch. Uh, thanks, Liz, for coming dropping by. Let me just take off the... If you want to get texture or something, you can also put paper towel down and then just spatter it if you want more texture, like in certain, like the, um, into the land. If they want more into the water, like I see that there's more reflections in the water of the, of like the, the sky, even though there really isn't any clouds in there, but you could also put some little things in the water. Like it's the, like you watch this, it's just little, little reflections here and there. It's just the water is moving. It makes the water look movable. Like it's moving here a little bit. So there's little waves. You can do that, but really light, really, really light. It's not part of the dark part and that'll dry a lot lighter. And now my paper towel is like really, really, let me, no, let me get paper towel. Let me just dab this a little bit, make it a little bit lighter than what I put down. That'll just give it a little bit more of the look of waves. And even though there's not waves that many waves in this thing, but I kind of like to have the look of waves a little bit. That's what my teacher always had taught me that you should. No, I think we need a dog in there. <laughs> All right, and so a dog, we're just gonna make it a little, put like three little legs. I know because you have one can't see, it's in the back. And you put a tail and then you put in the head. And that thing you can also put in like his snout or ears. And then um, that time's a leash. Like a leash, you can just put that in there. And so you just put that right to him. And so there's a little dog there too. And then let's make a couple of spots on him. <laughs> we'll call this guy Spot. And then we gotta give him a shadow. All right, so let's take it off. And I think we're done, guys. And plenty of time. We get the tape off. And I didn't do one before because I didn't have a class today. A lot of times I have two of them for those of you who are new here. Um, I do two, one in the afternoon, but I am up in Duluth waiting for tomorrow to start my competition, the plein air competition. So there's only one for this week. And so there we have it, guys. Any more questions? Thank Francine. I hope they have fun. Next next week, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. And do remember though, next week we will not have any any paint along, unfortunately. Um, so you have to wait until the following week, which I'll then have another one. I will still pull out my newsletter. I hope to have my newsletter out. Hopefully, if you don't hear a newsletter and I didn't get it out, it may be very short um, because I'm gonna be in competition come tomorrow. And so I may not have something to show you next um, Tuesday or anything. So just please remember that there is no paint along next next Thursday. I will be in heated competition. <laughs> and then the following Thursday, we'll start up again. All right. And so until next time we sit with each other at the paint along, 
We'll see you then, guys. All right.